Right, let me stop okay. you. Let me yeah. stop you, sir, because I'm going to say something. And I want John to say something. I'm not anti-Iran. They invite me on Iranian TV every week, and I'm too busy to do it. National TV, television, okay? L let me explain something. I'm against attacking Iran. I want Iran to be able to have power and, and be able to have refineries and be able to have a good culture, okay? But the head of the Iranian military said, we have asymmetrical warfare capability in the U.S., sleeper cells so to, he made that threat and i have changed my stance towards iran a lot with those type of statements coming out because i don't want to have world war three the iranian government stands to gain from conflict just like the russians putin's going to get more powerful out of the west messing with them i don't want war i'm not saying putin's good or the u.s is good or iran's good these governments all tend to act the same john okay uh, in terms of the uh, if you don't believe the hezbollah thing there are documented reports in newspapers throughout Mexico and Belize of Hezbollah agents being arrested with Belizean passports. What does he no, say about the Iranian up. military commander, their Joint Chiefs of Staff chairman, saying we have sleeper cells? Are you denying that? I'm saying Hezbollah is strictly a resistance. No, no, I know Hezbollah is their, their, their militia armies in, in Lebanon and places. I understand that. It's it's engaged in a national. It's defensive. It's not an offensive force. It's strictly defensive. Well, when they arrested him, they had Hezbollah literature and stuff. But I mean, obviously, well, no, they 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 were well known Hezbollah agents. And and if you want to go and Google it, simply Google Hezbollah Belizean. Listen, if I'm going to infiltrate the U.S., I'm not going to send regular army. I'm going to send. Uh, uh, underground commandos. That's the kind of people that know how to infiltrate. It's people that have been fighting and beating the Israelis in Lebanon. I'm not going to send a regular Iranian army officer. So, uh, again, I've, I've, I'm, I'm not going to argue one way or the other. I'm just saying Google it yourself. Find out the truth yourself. I mean, I, I, I can tell you. You're not anti-Iranian, are you? Absolutely not. I'm not anti any, any uh, generic thing. I am anti what's happening to me. Of Hezbollah, it's a red flag for me. Uh, this is not right. That's okay, well, I mean, I'm just telling you, if I was an Iranian general, that's who I would send. I mean, the Iranian general said, we have sleeper cells in your country. Uh, again, j just Google it, sir, and, and if I am wrong, I will eat my shoe on television right here. Well, there's News 5, who helped Hezbollah terrorists get Benghazi, Passport Night East, Belize, there, there Belizean. Belizean, there it is. That's one of them. So, tr trust me, it's happening. I've heard it. I have documentation. The head of their military said it on on Iranian state TV. Now, it may be wrong and may be hard to believe, but unfortunately, it's very hard even for me to believe what's actually happening. That happens to me. to me in my life. My life is so crazy and so weird. I don't tell people half of it because people wouldn't believe it. Truth is stranger than fiction. I agree. My truth is, that's for sure. Oh, man, I tell you. Peter, listen, we're not your enemy, buddy. But, I mean, did you see the report where the head of the Iranian military said we have asymmetrical groups in your country? I don't believe that. I'm sorry. Do you believe the, the photograph of the passport? Just read, read, read Hold on, sir, read, sir, read sir. This is on press TV. Guys, put it on screen. I want to give them the headline if you can find that. Thanks. Whatever, whatever. I, just, <laughs> I appreciate your call. I am, people call me still and go, I don't believe they have goats that are part spiders that produce armored milk. I mean, that's been out for 15 years. It just They just do not believe us. I just do not understand it. Stephanie in Iowa, you're on the air with John McAvee and company. Go ahead. Hi. Um, thanks for uh, doing everything that you do. Appreciate getting on. First time caller. I do have um, a question about the app. I don't know. I got into the conversation late. So the app is coming out when? It should be out in five days. In five days. And you just get it from Google Play? Go absolutely, it's totally free. Okay, perfect. And then exactly like I don't have smartphones that I actually use. They don't have service or anything. So, but I'm just scared that they're still taking still pictures or they can listen into conversations. Well, so it, it'll let me know all that stuff. If you don't have a smartphone, you don't have much to worry about. Um, okay. if, if you have an Android phone, um, then you definitely need to run this app. Yeah, because it's an Android phone, but no service on it. And there's an iPhone, no service on it, and tablets and. Well, that, that, okay. may, that may be a blessing in disguise. Okay, perfect. And then I have a question on, or uh, comment about that, uh, the plane. I think that they were flying under the radar at like under 3,000 feet, or 3,000 feet, and they're, somebody, another country is probably wanting something on that plane. Or oh, someone. yeah, that's what, yeah. That's entirely, that's entirely possible. 
Yeah, and you can see, like, I watch the news, and I'm like, I can see right through their lies, and they'll never say anything like that. Well, if they knew some government was involved, they may be diplomatically deciding what to do, like Benghazi. Appreciate your call. Great questions, great points. Paul in Connecticut. We're moving quick now. Go ahead, Paul. You're on the air. Hi, John. How you doing? I'm doing good, Paul. Uh, look, I was told by an old OSS guy that you got your start at McAfee by actually creating the viruses and then having that software there to solve it. So kind of like a Hegelian, create the problem, have the solution ready. Right. If that's true, and I'd love to hear, I can't believe I'm actually talking <laughs> to you guys, your response to that. But if that's true, I mean, I would be suspect to this new software that you have. Will your code be open for everyone to look at? Uh, well, it, 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 we're not we're not put, we're not uh, putting out source code. We're putting out an app. You're you're free to disassemble it and and look at it yourself if you wish. But but think about it. Uh, there were at the time uh, thousands of computer viruses. Why would I spend uh, months or have my team spend months? Why would you build a fish hatchery more? when you got plenty of fish? Right. You got you got more fish than you can possibly deal with. We could barely keep up with the viruses that were out there. So we certainly had no time to build new ones. Um, and, and and that would be senseless. And, and hey, skip this network break. Skip this network break. Go ahead. Okay, it would just be a senseless thing to do. So I can categorically say, and, and you can talk to any of the, uh, the McAfee employees uh, that were there at the time, uh, that thought never crossed oh, But see, that's mind. those rumors. I always love it like, right. there's rumors you're really Bill Hicks, no right. proof, you son of a bitch, I'm going to kill you. Uh, or there's a guy, an old OSS guy told me you were really making the viruses. I, I mean, again, I, we now know it's the FBI, it's the governments that are making the viruses to steal data and surveil everybody. It's never come out that virus companies are making viruses. Why would you ever do that? Because you would surely get caught. It came out the U.S. government with the Israelis made Stuxnet. You cannot hide this stuff. Yeah, you'd make a lot more money writing the code to correct the real viruses that are out there. And when it first started, it wasn't the government's doing When it first started, it was really just hackers throughout the world that were, you know, like uh, uh, people just wanting to disrupt life because they had no life of their own. Yeah, now, now it's cybercrime. I mean, there's a guy yes. named Kaspersky who has his software suite. He's a Russian guy, a uh, former KGB dude. And this guy, he uh, he does a lot of research into uh, all these viruses. And he's been at the forefront of exposing the things like Stuxnet, breaking it down, who put it together, um, you know, what does this code look like? Um, and, and all the follow-ups that came out of that was Flame. There, there's been a couple other versions out there. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of people writing viruses all over the world. And now it's all about uh, cybercrime and surveillance. It's government. It's government sponsored. You know, a lot of these things. Are op it's now the Chinese, Russian, U.S. government, NATO, EU. It's an all out exploitation war. Mm -hmm. Brzezinski's argument is they even want to run the crime and run the money laundering. So, quote, others don't get that market and blood supply. That's the argument for the system to run crime openly. And we are woefully unprepared for what's happening. Where's it all going, John McAvee? Uh, well, if we don't do something, it's going into absolute devastation for this country. Absolute. Describe why. Um, because all you have to do is destabilize the economy. For, for example, if you, if you look at what's happened just in the past few months, uh, three or four major retailers, large retailers. We've got Target. We have um, Neiman Marcus. Uh, where it's a whole bunch of them. Where hundreds of millions of credit cards were stolen. Now think, what if they only, what if they only managed to get 100 or $200 off of each one? Think what that's going to do to this economy. Think what it has done perhaps to this economy. Well, and it's getting worse and worse. So Is that a state job, probably Russians or something with Target? You know, I, I don't think so. I think it's, it depends what we call by the state. In Russia, it's, it's difficult to separate this. Well, this the mafia state. deep state. Right, right. The, yeah, the mafia deep state, I think, is what's doing it. Well, yeah. you know, it, when they take credit information, when they take money, I mean, <clears throat> those things to the consumer are very recoverable. You, you can clean up your credit and, you can you know, you've got certain protections and things like that. No doubt there's a big impact. But what a lot of people, lot of people don't realize is that when, they, when these breaches happen, where they grab your username and your information, your username, your password, your password, it, it's a well-known fact that something like 80, 85% of people reuse their passwords everywhere. So if I've grab, grabbed your password for Angry Birds or whatever, you know, there's a good chance that's part of your password, if not your actual password. And that's the big issue. And we, and we got guys saying, John, are you the one making the viruses? Which I don't think is a bad question. I'm not attacking the caller. Uh, is he still there? You got any final comments? No, it, it's a fair question. Uh, yeah, hi guys. Yeah, so you know, look, identity theft companies make money. Uh, they want to maybe go to an RFID and to the to, to the credit cards themselves. Another business opportunity there. So these are all problem reaction solutions too, in part. So I'm just one of the. Oh well, I mean that's like an open. arms race. Yeah, where they no, keep, I, keep, I you know, keep releasing the new weapons. I got to jump to other people. I appreciate your call, John McAvee. You're the problem.
You just heard it. Uh, let's talk to uh, let's talk to Jonathan in Florida. You're on the air. Go ahead. How are you, Alex? How are you, John? We're doing pretty good. Go ahead. Okay. Well, this is my area of expertise. I just want to say to the previous caller that Hezbollah, as well as the IRA and the Mexican cartel, actually do business together to try to gain forms of uh, obtaining a weapon of mass destruction. So anything you hear to the contrary is quite the lie. You're absolutely correct. That is absolutely correct, sir. And I also want to say that um, as far as people, th have you heard about the petition going around where people are being in here in America or on our land that are being obstructed with low pressure frequencies? You should make an application to help people in your own country before you do anything else in any other country. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, to detect stuff like that. Very interesting. Thank you, Jonathan. We're going to move quick now. Rick in Nevada, you're on the air with John McAvee. Yes, sir. Paul stole my thunder, but I'd like to ask you to consider making the uh, a cognizant uh, open source or free software as free as in free code and free as in the free beer. We will, we will certainly consider that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew in Illinois, go ahead. Um, good luck. I'll be with you, uh, John, and with you, Alex. There's a lot of stuff coming down and uh, in our country. And we're going to get a, hopefully we get a pro-gun uh, uh, governor for Illinois. That's what we're looking forward to. I've already received a phone call. Oh, there's a libertarian Kansas. wave taking the country over. We're about to take over the Republican Party. That's why Obama might start a war with the Russians, to make him the hero, to get his whole agenda through. And that's why I just realized I got a bad feeling. And I've been have, have had one for six months, John. I think they may actually start a big war with Russia. I think we're in deep crap. What do you say? You know, I have no information on that whatsoever. But I'm but saying, it's, I mean... It's a, uh, it's a believable scenario, no question about it. I just hope cooler heads prevail. What do you think, Andrew? They don't want us to take the country back. Uh, well, I'm, I'm all for what you're doing, and uh, I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. Speaking of planes, real quick, on the Kennedy plane downing, there was two 911 uh, stories in UPI and Associated Press about mid-air explosion. Once they found the debris field, they killed the story. Oh, yeah, you're talking about uh, JFK Jr.? Yep. Oh, they killed him dead in a hammer because he was going to probably run for the Senate and then president. And there was no way he'd end up losing down the road. That is true. Whether that actually happened, I do not know, but you are correct. Oh, I remember going over all the evidence, man. They killed him dead in a hammer. Thanks, Andrew. Final caller, Raymond in California, real fast. Oh, hey, guys. I remember you guys were talking about the um, software privacy issue, but I also read an article that there were 3G spy chips inside many electronics. Yeah, what about devices? Intel and all those guys that have chips that power up themselves? Well, uh, this is a serious problem. Um, the question is, is what motivated them to do this? I, I suspect that there was serious pressure from one or more agencies within the U.S. government to do this because this opens up uh, everybody to every kind of spying. And yeah, even if your computer's not wired in, what do they call right. that? Uh, boxed or... Yes. Uh, so even if your computer's not, they can just energize it, suck energize the Energize it and suck everything out. So, uh, again, I, I have no specific information on this, and I, I, I hate to comment on things I know nothing about, but it, it certainly, it bodes ill for all of us. Well, it's admitted, and, it, and it's just, it's, it's incredible. Thank you so much, caller. Guys, great interview. Whoismcafee.com. And, of course, you can visit the site that's doing these reports, siliconangle.com. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. It was a great two hours of radio today. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. All right, folks. Lord willing, we'll be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. And then I'll be back tomorrow with the Friday edition of the Worldwide Transmission. And then Sunday, I'll be in studio live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, with the Sunday Transmission. I'm going to go have a cup of coffee with John McAvee and company. Great job to the crew. Until next time, if you're watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go.